Okay, maybe we can start. So we have quarter three, module five. A uh, module five, I'm sorry. Uh, quarter three, modules one, two, and three. Am I right? Yes, po, sir. Okay. And then, of course, your worksheet, this one. Okay, so your worksheet actually comprises of activities from your module 1, your module 2, and of course, your module 3. And this is what we're going to discuss uh, this morning. Okay, that's it. So first and foremost... Uh, let's discuss first the different um, properties dito sa, ano niya, sa module 1, uh, describing mathematical system. Uh, ito yung sinend, sinend ko sa GC niya actually. Uh, kasi yung na-print ko, una kong na-print is this one uh, from Negros. Kasi hindi ko pa siya nakita that time. Dito tayo. So, describing mathematical system. So, mag-start muna tayo sa mga axioms. Ginagamit kasi natin to sa proving. Uh, it is very necessary na ma-recall natin yung mga properties or mathematical axioms na tinatawag. Ito. So, we have here the commutative property. We have the associated property, we have the reflexive, symmetric, multiplicative, inverse, addition, and then we have the transitive. Actually, marami to. Dito, kukonti lang yung, ano, yung binigyan niya dito. Well, as far as I could remember, na-discuss na natin to last time, ba? So, kapag sinabi natin commutative property, it involves... Um, two quantities dalawang quantities either ina-add or minimultiply uh, for example sa commutative property property of addition addition halimbawa for example kung meron tayong dalawang number let's say 5 and 3 so, 5 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 5. Pareho lang yun. That means, that means that the order of the addends does not affect the sum. Ang ibig sabihin nun. Kahit anong order natin silang i-add, hindi magbabago yung sum nila. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng um, commutative property. Sa addition ha, of addition. Okay? While, mabilisan lang to class ha, while sa commutative property of multiplication naman, here, same two quantities, this time naman, multiply natin sila, so, for example, we have 5 times 3. It's still equal to 3 times 5. The same with commutative property of addition, the order of the multiplicands does not affect the product. So, 5 times 3 is still equal to 3 times 5. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng commutative property of multiplication. Another one is the... Associative property of addition then. Property of addition. So, ang kinaibahan lang dito ng associative property of addition sa commutative, it involves um, three quantities. Minimum. Okay? 
Um, so, for example, we have 2, 5, and 6. The numbers are 2, 5, and 6. So, halimbawa, we have 2 plus 5. If we're going to add 2 and 5 first before adding 6, is still equal Pariho pa rin yung magiging sum nila if we're going to add 5 and 6 first. Okay? So, dito sa left-hand side, we added 2 and 5 first. That is 7. And then plus 6. So, we have 13. On the right-hand side, we added 5 and 6 first. So, we have 11 plus 2 here, we have 13 still. So, as you can see, the order of the addends does not affect the sum. Are you following? Yes. Okay. So, that is associative property of addition. Of course, we also have associative property of multiplication. It still involves um, three quantities, the least. So, in here, we're going to multiply first 2 and 5. Okay. 2 times 5. Before we multiply it to 6. Will it still be equal to 2 times and then 5 times 6? Okay. So, on the left-hand side, we multiplied 2 and 5 first. We have 10 and then times 6. So, we have 60. On the right-hand side, we multiplied 5 and 6 first. We have 30 and then multiplied by 2. So, we still have 60. So, as you can see, the order of the numbers to be multiplied does not affect the product. Okay? So, that's what associative property of multiplication means. A take note, ha? We always perform the operation inside the parentheses first, following the GEMDAS rule. Okay, are you familiar of the Jamdas rule? Diba? The Jamdas rule. That means we're going to multiply, or we're going to perform operations inside the grouping symbols. Grouping symbols first. So, there are different grouping symbols. We have parentheses. In this case, we have parentheses. Parentheses. Brackets. Diba? So, we have brackets. We have braces. Ito yung mga different grouping symbols. Nagsa-start muna tayo sa parentheses and then brackets. And then braces. And then yung e dito, kung merong mga involved na exponents. After we remove the different grouping symbols, we perform uh, expressions with exponents. And then m does multiplication from left to right, division from left to right, always from left to right. Ah. And then division, addition, and then subtraction. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng Jamdas rule kapag nagsisimplify. And then, we have the distributive property. Distributive property. That means, kapag sinabi natin distributive, nagdi-distribute. Supposing we have Excuses. 
we have 4 times mm, 3 plus 6. Okay? That means, we are going to distribute 4 inside the parentheses. Distribute natin yung 4 sa 3 and then sa 6. Ang ibig sabihin nun is 4 times 3 plus um, 4 times 6. Yun ang ibig sabihin. Dinistribute natin yung 4 sa 3 and sa 6. Or, kung meron tayong mga mathematical expressions, for example, we have 4 times um, x, salimbawa, plus y. So, distribute 4 inside the quantity. So, we have 4x plus 4y. Okay? So, yun ibig sabihin ng distributive. <clears throat> and then, we have the additive property. Uh, ano pa? Unahin natin yung mga, madada, yung mga importante. Existence. Okay. Yung reflexive property. Reflexive property. <clears throat> Any number, anything is equal to itself. Ang ibig sabihin ng reflexive is any real number is equal to itself or anything is equal to, to itself. For example, we have A is equal to A or 1 is equal to 1. Ang sarili niya, equal din siya sa sarili niya. So that is what uh, we meant by reflexive property. So for example, 2 is equal to 2. So, madali lang naman yung reflexive property. And then, the next one is the symmetric. Symmetric property. Pag sinabi natin symmetric property, um, for example, meron tayong dalawang quantities na A and B. Okay. So, kapag sinabi natin A is equal to B, that means B is equal to A. Balik rin natin sila, pareho lang din yan. Okay? Yan ang ibig sabihin ng symmetric property. Do you follow? Yes po, sir. Okay. Oops. Uh, that's it. So, kapag nagsosolve tayo ng mga equations, for example, yung end result natin is y is equal to 3. Let's say, for instance, y equals to 3. Then, we can also say that 3 is equal to y. Pareho lang yan. Pero, yung <clears throat> usual natin kasi na na, na pag-express which we are comfortable doing is nandito yung variable sa left and doon yung quantity or number sa right. Okay, but they are still the same. Or they are still equal. Correct. Both are correct. And the other one is transitive. So, transitive property. Okay. So, kapag sinabi natin transitive, uh, kung meron tayong tatlong quantities, let's say A, B, and C. Okay? At kapag sinabi natin A is equal to B, here, and B is equal to C, then, we can say also that A is equal to C. Okay, ulitin ko ha. Kung meron tayong quantities na tatlo, or three quantities, A, B, and C. And 
when we say A is equal to B, kung equal yung value ng A and B, and equal din yung value ng B and C, then we can say that A is also equal to C. Okay? That is what we call the transitive property of equality. Okay? And then next, we have the addition property. Actually, napagdaanan nyo na to sa mga previous nyo ng mga modules. Eh, sa mga modules nyo. Pero, i-refresh lang natin. So, addition property, let's say we have two quantities again, A and B. If A is equal to B, and we're going to add a number to both sides, for example, that number is C, then A plus C is still equal to B plus C. Okay? So, kung ang A daw dito ay equal sa B, tapos nagdagdag tayo ng number na C sa magkabilaan, so A plus C, so pareho lang yung dinagdag natin both sides, meaning equal yung both sides. Equal yung sum sa left, and then yung sum sa right. So that is addition property. Same with multiplication. Okay? Same with multiplication property. So multiplication property... Here, again, if A um, times B, if A is equal to B, I mean, if A is equal to B, then if we're going to multiply a number C to both sides of the equation, then A times C is equal to B times C. Yan ang ibig sabihin nun. Okay? Do you follow? Naiintindihan nyo, class? Nasusundan nyo? Or... Uh, yes. So, if you have any clarification... Pwede natin i-entertain before we proceed to our next discussion. Siyempre, meron tayong identity property of zero. Lahat na i-multiply sa zero, magiging zero. That is what we call identity property of z uh, zero. Of course, meron tayong multiplicative inverse para na-discuss na rin natin yan, yung kabaliktaran. Di ba? Mga multiplicative inverse. Kailangan nyo, lang, kailangan nyo yan na matandaan eh. Multiplicative inverse property. So, kung meron tayong, uh, meron tayong fraction, ang goal lang ng multiplicative inverse property is to make that quantity equal to 1. So, halimbawa, meron tayong fraction na Let's say, let's say two-thirds. Ayan. So, kung multiply natin siya sa kanyang multiplicative inverse, ayan, we usually use dot to represent multiplication. So, ang multiplicative inverse ng two-thirds, babalik ta rin mo lang siya, yung reciprocal na tinatawag. The numerator becomes your denominator and then your denominator will, uh, becomes your becomes the numerator. So that means we have 3 over 2. Then this becomes equal to 1. Yan lang parati yung goal ng multiplicative inverse property. Oh, another example. Let's say we have um, 1 fifth. So, what is the, the multiplicative inverse of 1 fifth? Anyone? 
what is the multiplicative inverse of one fifth? Five over one po, sir. Yes, five over one or simply five, right? So, ibig sabihin, kapag may multiply, maka-cancel kasi ito. Yung ito na to. So, maka-cancel yan sila. Ayan, yung five na to. Kasi, naka-cancel yan kasi nag-divide tayo. Five divided by five becomes one. So, magiging one din yan sila. So, ganun lang yung multiplicative inverse property. But you have to take note ah, that we cannot divide any number by zero. That becomes undefined. Okay? Walang specific na sagot. Unless, uh, we are dealing with higher mathematics such as calculus. So, pwede nating hanapan yan ng limits. Pero, but, but for now, in simpler concept, so, any number divided by zero, zero is undefined. Understood? Apo, sir. Okay. So, do you have any uh, question or clarification? Meron pa kayo sa module, hindi natin na-discuss na dyan. Tignan nyo kung anong property yan dyan. Tignan nyo maigi. Of course, meron din tayong subtraction property. Pareho lang yung addition property. Kung ano yung sinabtract mo both sides, magiging equal pa rin yung sagot. Same with the, added, the ano, addition property dito. Itong dito na to. So, meron din tayong subtraction property. That's it. So, sa subtraction property, instead, we added, we subtract. So, then we have A minus C is still equal to um, B minus C. Ganon din naman. Okay? Pareho lang yan. Then, let's move. If you have, if you don't have any question or clarification, then let's move on to our next topic. So, andito sa, sa modules nyo. Meron kayong ibang... Ah, sagutan natin to ng saglit. What is the answer for number one? Commutative. Commutative, commutative property. What's the answer? Anyone? The answer here is... Come again? G. Is it letter G? Take note, ha, commutative property involves two quantities. Dalawang quantities, either in add or multiply. So, number one, the answer here is letter what? What's the answer? So, number one. It's? O. Is it O? Mm. Tignan niya natin. Tignan niyo oh. Ang commutative property of addition oh, you know. Yung order ng addends or multiplicands does not affect the sum and the product respectively. May no commutative property of addition multiplication. So anong anong letter yan sa dia? Jaan. Letter E po sir. Letter E. Ayun no, ito to. Di ba? A A na yan, ibig sabihin kung magkatabi ang dalawang variables, it is to be understood that that the operation is multiplication. Okay? So number 1 is letter E. How about number 2, associative? Pwede yung picture and screenshot yung ano kanina para meron kayong mga examples. Anyway, you have your modules naman. Parang and andyan din naman yan. Ibang letters, ibang letters lang siguro yung ginamit. So, letter, ano? Number 2 is what? Letter M po, sir. Letter M. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, it's letter M. Okay. 
How about number three? Reflexive. Reflexive. Letter Y. It's letter. Letter Y. Letter Y. Do you agree? Letter Y. So reflexive natin kanina. So anything is equal to itself. Equal din siya sa sarili niya. So it's letter Y. Okay, very good. Next, number four. Symmetric. Letter O po, sir. Letter O. Without looking at your ano, ha, answer key, sa modules, test yourself. Multiplicative inverse. Letter G. Letter G. Okay. Then, let's have number 6. What letter? Um... Letter R. Letter R. Okay. So, we added C both sides. And for number 7, transitive property. Letter T. Letter T. T. Okay. Transitive. Are you following? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. So, I think you can answer our worksheet now. Sa, nandito kayo nilagay, ayan o. Meron yung part A and part B. Okay? Do you follow? Yes, sir. Madali na yan. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mm, ano pa dito? Mathematical. Okay. So, andito na tayo sa mathematical system in relation to geometry. So, geometry, of course, has a big contribution in our society. So, it is the beginning of numerous easy and complicated designs of buildings, infrastructures, houses, churches, and many others. So, to discuss this one, punta tayo dito sa slides. Okay? Uh, do you see the slides? Yes, sir. Okay. So, the mathematical system actually, pwede nyo yung screenshot para meron kayong copy. The mathematical system consists of the undefined terms, the defined terms, axioms, and then the theorems. And when we say undefined terms, in geometry, we come across with terms which cannot be precisely defined. That means they cannot be defined exactly. There is no definite definition. Walang exacto na, na, na kahulugan or definition yung term na yun. That is why we call them undefined terms. The word un, the prefix un means not defined or not yet defined. So in modern mathematics, we accept certain undefined terms by description. They don't have any definition but we can actually describe the terms. Then it describe lang natin yung terms na yan. And another one is the defined terms. We will learn about undefined terms later. And then, we have the defined terms. So, the opposite of undefined. Kabalik niya. If undefined terms cannot be precisely defined, the defined terms naman have a formal definition. Okay? Meron siyang formal na definition. And they are used to define even more terms. And the third one, we have the axioms and postulates. 
yung diniscuss natin earlier about properties, mga transitive, symmetric, additive, those are axioms actually. Yung mga postulates na to sa mga ano na to, sa geometry, sa mga lines, um, line segment, mga triangles, quadrilaterals, and more. So kapag sinabi nating axioms and postulates, it is a statement which is accepted as true without proof. So, tanggap na yung mga concept na to kahit walang proof. Okay? Accepted as true without proof. Ito yung mga axioms and postulates. For example, kailangan pa ba nating i-prove na ang 2 ay equal sa 2? Kailangan pa ba nating i-prove yun? Na ang, na ang sarili ay equal din sa sarili niya? Hindi na kailangan, di ba? So, they are... They are what we call axioms and postulates. So these statements can be used as reasons. Ito yung ginagamit natin ng mga reasons in proving some mathematical statements. Okay? Yan yung axioms and postulates. And of course, the last one we have theorems. When we say theorem, it is a statement that can be proven. Ito yung mga statement na pwede nating patunayan na... Tama o hindi? That can be proven. Once a theorem is proven, it can also be used as a reason in, pro in proving other statements. So, once na na-prove na natin na tama yung, yung concept na yun, pwede rin natin siyang gamitin sa pag-prove ng iba pang concept. But you have to take note, kapag hindi pa natin na-prove na tama yung concept na yun, hindi natin pwedeng gamitin sa mga statements. Understood. Anyone? Yes. Mag magtanong yes, lang ha. You can you can uh, you can butt in actually kung meron kayong hindi maintindihan. If you need to clarify something then just uh, turn your mic on and then say something. I'll I'll give you time. Okay. So again, these are the four concepts under mathematical systems. We have the undefined terms, the defined terms, the axioms and postulates, and then, of course, the theorems. So, it is very necessary or crucial that you know the difference or the differences ng mga terms na to. Okay, that's it. Then, what are the undefined terms in geometry? This, uh, we have here three undefined terms. We have point, line, and then plane. Why do we call these terms undefined? Bakit tinatawag natin na undefined yung mga terms na to? What do you think? Why do you think we call these terms undefined? Anyone? Bakit tinatawag natin silang undefined? Because we can only describe these terms. Pwede lang natin silang ma-describe. Kasi there is no exact naman on how to draw point. ba? Walang exact naman na criteria on how to draw point. Wala siyang definite na thickness, na width, okay? Or length, or depth, maybe. So, pwede kasi tayong mag, pwede kasi tayong mag-drawing ng point na ganito lang. Pwede namang mag ganito kalaki, okay? So, wala siyang definite, wala siyang exacto na, na sukat, na, ha, na lapad, or lalim na tinatawag. Kaya nga sila undefined terms. We can only describe them. Okay? Understood? Yes, sir. Okay, that's it. And then, the next one is line. Okay? So, just like, just like point, line has no definite um, width. Depende lang yan sa pagsulat. Okay? For example, ganyan, pwede namang kapalan. 
as long as it is aligned. Okay? So, we cannot define them precisely, but we can actually describe what is aligned. And of course, we have here the plane. Okay? So, kapag sinabi nating plane, a set of points contained in a flat surface, lahat ng flat surface, and extends indefinitely in all directions. Okay? So, for example, yung box na to. So, this is an example of a plane. Okay? Set of uh, points contained in this flat surface. Ito. Table new flat surface. So, that is an example of a plane. And, and a plane can be extended indefinitely. Okay? Yung concept ng plane pwede natin ma-extend na walang katapusan. And then the defined terms, examples are collinear points, coplanar points, and then subsets of a line. So these are examples of defined terms, collinear points. As you can see, ginamit na natin dito yung, yung term na point. Okay? And then, line, here. And then, yung third one dito, under axioms, yung diniscuss natin kanina, yung mga properties, axioms yun, and then, postulates, here. Okay? And then, of course, there are many theorems actually, and we can't discuss them uh, one by one. Di natin sila, we can't discuss all the, ter all the theorems involved. Maliban siguro as we prove uh, sa mathematical concepts, kung nagpo-prove tayo, madidiscuss natin sila. Kung nasa face-to-face -face maybe. Okay? Pwede natin yung madiscuss ng, ng mahaba. So for example here, sa ilalim na to, we have here line. Ito yung undefined terms. Tapos, ginam binagdaga natin siya ng segment. So, this becomes now the defined terms, defined, a defined term rather, line segment. And then, we can derive a postulate out of this concept, two points determine a line. So, kailangan natin ng dalawang points para makagawa tayo ng line. Kung isang point lang yan, hindi tayo makagawa ng line. For example, if we have point here, and then another point here. So, kapag kinonect natin yung dalawang points, so we can actually create a line. So, that is already a postulate. Understood? Naintindihan? Yes, sir. So, that becomes a postulate. And then, sa theorem, out of this postulate, the shortest segment from a point, not on a, not on a line to the line is the perpendicular segment. Okay? So, the shortest segment daw from a point not on a line to the line is the perpendicular segment. So, kung meron tayong point dito, halimbawa, ganun. Tapos, nag-draw tayo ng ganyan. Yan yung perpendicular Meaning, the angle formed is 90 degrees. Okay, naging theorem na siya. So, out of undefined terms, we can actually produce a defined term. And then, out of this defined term, we can develop postulates. And out of postulates, we can develop it into theorems. Okay? That's the basic concept, actually. Question? May tanong? Wala na, sir. Okay. So, undefined terms, okay? Just a recall, we have point, line, and then we have plane. And some of the defined terms, we have collinear points, coplanar points, non-collinear and non-coplanar points and subsets of a line. So, marami tayong subsets ng line. 
kasi meron tayong mga line segment, rays, so on and so forth. Say activity. You tell me if the image or the picture represents a point, a line, or a plane. Let's start here with uh, sesame seed. Point, sir. Point, po. Okay, it's a point. How about board here? Plane. Plane. A plane, plane yes. Plane. Rope. Line. line. Okay, line. Uh, what, what if kung ano, yung... Yung buhol sa rope ang tinutukoy. Point. Point. Okay, magiging point siya kung buhol yung tinutukoy. Corner of a box. Plain. Is it plain? Point. Point po. Yung corner plain. ito, yung yung corner ito yung to, ano na to, yung plain po. Ayan no. Ah. Yung ano yung point. yung yung ano pinaka point. Gilid ng ano, ng box, yung matulis na yan, yan yung corner. It's? Point. point. It's a point. Okay. Edge of a table. Yung gilid, edge. Line. It's a line. Point. Yes. Notepad. Plane. It's plane. a plane. Edge of notepad, for example. Point po, sir. Edge. Line po. Line. Carpet. Plane. Plane. It's a plane. plane. Pencil. Line. 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 It's a line. line. Pero kung tanong, tip of a pencil, yung tip niya, Ito yung dulo. Point. It's a point. Point. Tip of a pen. Point. Point din po. Point din. Okay? Understood? Yes po. Yes sir. Okay, that's it. Uh, ayan na siya. Nasagot na naman natin yan eh. Okay. So let's define now the different terms. May it be undefined or defined. So, kapag sinabi natin point, um, pakibasa nga, Merzel? A position in space has only location but no dimensional length with thickness and does not occupy an area. Yes. So, kapag sinabi natin point, a position in space. Kasi ginagamit natin yung point to locate a specific Position or location. And it has only location but no dimension, length, width, thickness, and does not occupy an area. So, wala kasi siyang specific na, na width or thickness. And a point is named using a capital letter and it can be modeled by a dot. So, for, for example, we have here point A. Here, we have point B. Masyado nga lang malaki dito yung pagkaka, ano ng point. And then point C and point D. Take note ha, we use capital letter to denote a point. Okay? So capital letter, not small letter. And you have to take note that all other geometric figures are made up of a collection of points. Lahat ng mga geometric figures, it all starts from a point and then if we have set of points, then nagkakaroon tayo ng geometric figures. So lahat ng concept ng geometry nag-start halos sa mga undefined terms such as point, line, and then plane. Are you following? Yes po. yes po, sir. Okay. And then, let's move on to the next undefined term, line. 
please read Calex. Is Calex around? Yes, po, sir. Please read. Yes, po, sir. Go. It is named by a single lowercase script letter. Start, start or from by start from its definition. Sa taas. A line is a, a straight continuous arrangement or infinitely many points. Its length is infinite. It extends infinitely in two directions. It has no thickness. Okay. So when we say a line, it is a straight. Okay? Pagtiko yan, hindi yan line ha. Curve na yan. Oh, wait. It is a straight continuous arrangement of infinitely many points. Okay? Its length is infinite. Kapag sinabi ding infinite, walang katapusan. It extends infinitely in two directions and it has no thickness. Okay? Infinitely many points. Halimbawa, eto yung line natin na to. So, kasi maraming points dyan sa gitna. Infinitely. Walang katapusang points yan siya. Okay? Yan ibig sabihin nun. Its length is infinite. Kapag sinabi ting infinite, walang katapusan. Kasi, we denote here, or observe, meron tayo ditong arrow. The arrow here indicates that the line can be extended further. Pwede siya ma-extend. Yan ibig sabihin niyan, meaning patuloy pa rin siya doon. On both sides. So that is why it extends infinitely into directions. And, an, and as I've said earlier, it has no thickness. So wala siyang definite na thickness. So, take note, arrowhead symbolizes infinity. Meaning that the line can be extended further in both directions. And how do we name a line? So, it is named by a single lowercase script letter or by any two points on a line. So, two capital letters. Take note kanina yung postulate natin that we need at least two points to determine a line. So, we have here point A and then point B. We can name the, this as line AB by using the two points here, line AB, or by representing it using a small letter uh, for example we have here d so we can call this line d the, the symbol here or the line with two headed arrows above d so that means line d ang ibig sabihin nun. okay kung d lang yan siya hindi yan line unless lagyan mo ng word na line d Without using the word line, you can use a symbol above the small letter to denote that we are talking about line. Understood? Okay. So we have here line AB or line BA. Pariho lang yan. Line AB or line BA. But um, usually, para nagdining tayo ng, ng ano, if we are using letters, actually, sinusunod natin yung ano ng alphabet, alphabetical. Pero both are correct. Line A, B, or line B, A. Okay? Understood? Naintindihan? Yes, sir. Opo, sir. Okay. Then, moving on. Plane. Please read. Um, Daniel. Plane. A flat surface that extends infinitely along its length and width. It is like an infinite sheet of paper. It has length and width but no thickness. Okay. So when we say plane, it is a flat surface or surface that extends infinitely along its length and width. It is like an infinite sheet of paper. It has length and width but no thickness. Okay? Extends in infinitely ha? Kasi pwede natin ito ma-extend doon. Here. Papunta doon. Papunta doon. Okay? 
and it is named by a single script capital letter or by any three points in the plane which are not on the same line. So we have here a square and the square is an example of a plane. So we have here um, L, point L here, point I, point F, and point E. So we can name this plane actually as and we have here a point D, which is not on the line. Wala dito sa line LE, line LI, line IF, and line EF. This point D does not lie on, on line na binanggit yung kanina. So, ibig sabihin nun, non-collinear. Hindi, hindi siya doon naka in line. So, how do we name this plane? So, we have plane D. Pwede natin gamitin yung point doon sa loob na wala sa mga line. Or, you by using three um, points, uh, point LIF, ayan, plane LIF, I mean, and then plane IFE, plane LEF, plane EFI, plane LIFE or four letters. Okay? Pwede tayong gumamit ng four letters. But pwede, but pwede rin gumamit ng three letters or a point that is not on the same line. Just like point D here. So at least three non-collinear points determine a plane. So how do we... Ito yung postulate. We need at least th three non-collinear points to determine a plane. Dapat non-collinear. Meaning wasan saan nagapasunod. Huwag saan sa isang linya do points. Ayan. Kasi, if the points lie on the same line, hindi tayo makakagawa ng plane. So, dapat, the points does, that does not lie on the same line. Halimbawa, dito. Tsaka yung isa dito. Ayan. So, kapag kinonek natin sila, ayun, nakakagawa tayo ng plane. Okay? So, this is postulate. And take note, yung postulate accepted as true without proving. Okay? Kasi nakikita natin siya. Then, punta naman tayo sa mga defined terms. So again, what are the three undefined terms in geometry? We have Point, line, plane. Okay, point, line, and plane. And how many points do we need to determine a line? Two. At least two points. Okay? Pinakamababa yung dalawa. And how many points do we need to determine a plane? Four. Hmm? Or three. Why, why, why or? We need at least three points. Okay? Pinakamababa, three. Siyempre, kapag four, pwedeng-pwede na yun. Kasi sumobra na nga sa three. At least means pinakamababa. Okay. <clears throat> so, we have here collinear points. So, when we say collinear points, are points that lie on the same line. Okay? So, point A, B, and C are what we call collinear points because these three, po three points rather lie on the same line. Nasa isang linya sila. So, tinatawag natin silang collinear points. And when we say non-collinear points, points that do not lie on the same line. So, we have point A and B are collinear points, but point C, okay, does not lie on the say, line A, B, therefore, non-collinear point. Understood? Naintindihan? Aba, sir. Okay. So, proceed tayo. Next, we have coplanar from the word plane. Kung meron tayong collinear, meron din tayong coplanar. Kapag sinabi natin coplanar points are points that lie on the same 
plane. Andun sila sa mismo sa plane na yun. So, we have here points A, B, and C are coplanar points. Kasi these three points lie on the same plane. While non-coplanar points are points that do not lie on the same plane. So, we have here point A and B are coplanar points. However, we have point C here that um, do not lie on this plane. Therefore, this point is non-coplanar point. Okay? Hindi siya kasama dun sa, sa plane. So, non-coplanar. And we have here line segment. So, out of undefined terms, we can derive different terms, defined terms out of undefined terms. And one of that is line segment, ray, and opposite rays na tinatawag. So, when we say line segment, um, Jeffany? Yes, po, sir. Yes, please read. A line segment is a part of a line consisting two endpoints and all the points in between. Yes. So, a line segment is a part of a line, kaya nga tinatawag siyang segment lang siya. So, part of a line consisting two endpoints. The endpoints here are point A and B and all the points in between. So, hindi lang nilalagay dito yung mga, yung mga points, pero actually, maraming points dyan sa gitna ng A and B. Okay? All the points in between. So, how do we name this line segment? So, the line segment may be called line AB, line segment AB, or line segment BA. Take note, ha? Kung ganito ang, ang symbol, that is line. Line AB. Pero kung wala siyang arrow, line segment yan siya. Line segment AB, katulad nito. Know the difference. Are you following? Yes, po, sir. Okay. Then, let's proceed. Ray. Um, please read. Romnik. A ray is a part of a line with only one endpoint and extending in only one direction. Yes. So, kapag sinabi naman natin ray, it is a part of a line with only one endpoint. Okay. Ano yung endpoint niya dyan? What's the endpoint there? Is it a, point A or point B? Point A po, sir. Point A. Kapag end point, hindi yung pinakadulo ha, kundi yung starting point niya. Yan yung end point. Sa line segment kasi, both can be end points. Kasi, yan o, pwedeng dito ka mag-start punta doon or dito papunta dito. Dito kasi, ito lang yung end point niya and we have here arrows, meaning diretso doon. Can be extended to the right. Okay. So, part of a line with only one end point, and that is point A, and extending in only one direction. Going to the right, denoted by this arrow. And a ray is named with its end point first, followed by the, uh, another point on the ray. So, the ray can be named ray AB. Pwede ba natin tawagin na ray BA? Can we call this ray BA? Anyone? No, po, sir. No. Why? Why do you think? Kasi ang sabi dito, name with its end point first. And the end point is A. Dito siya nag-start. So, we have ray AB and not ray BA. Okay? Understood? Okay. Yes, po, sir. Then, let's have opposite rays. Um, let's have... Oh, sige, Carlo. Okay. Opposite rays are rays with a common endpoint but extending in opposite direction. Yes. So, kapag sinabi naman nating opposite rays, they have a common endpoint but extending in opposite Directions. And the common endpoint here is point B. Dito sila nag-start pareho 
at pwede sila ma-extend kabilaan in opposite directions. So, opposite rays, we have ray BA and ray BC. Okay? B is between points A and C. So, yun yung kinaibahan ng ray sa opposite rays. Okay, that's it. Bisblisan na natin ng konti dito banda. Sige, let's try this one. Who can answer number one? Name all the points. Who can give one? Sige, sagot lang. Kung meron sagot. Point A, sir. Point A, yes. Okay, let's have point A here. Then, next. Point Y. Point Y. Okay. What else? Point C, sir. Point W. Is point C a point? Point W. Point W. W. Then, take note, capital letters ang point A. Remember the, the definition earlier. What else? Point Z, sir. Point Z. Point Z. Okay. What else? <coughs> we have? Point X, sir. Point X. Okay. Is that all? Yan na ba? So far, yun lang naman eh. Okay. Number two. Name all the lines using a script letter. Name the line. We can give one. So, how do we name a line or recall on how to name a line? Using two letters or two points that lie on the same on the line or using a small letter. Yes. We have? WX, sir. Line. You, you should ano, use the, the word line. W. w. Line WX. Okay. Line WX. Okay, correct. What else? ZY. Line WX or XW, still the same. We have ZY. Line ZY. Okay. Next. Or YZ. Yay. Next. Line WZ. Line WZ. Hindi ko na isusulat ha. Line WZ or line ZW. Correct. What else? Line XY, sir. Line XY or line YX. What else? Okay. What else? We can, we, we can use more letters. We have... What is the other name for line... Um, ZY. Another way of... Line YZ. Come again. Line YZ po. Y. Z. Line YZ. Line ZY or line uh, YZ. What else? Another way of naming line ZY or YZ. It's line what? It's line... Line D. Line D. Ito o, oh, small letter. Yan yung nirepresent niya na line o. Oh. Yan o. Oh. Okay. How about line WX or XW? Line C. Line C. How about line WZ or ZW? A. Line A. A. Line A. Line A. How about line XY or YX. Line B. Line B. Okay, that's it. As simple as that. Understood? Yes, po. Okay. So, sinagot na natin yung number three actually. Then, let's proceed to number four. Using a script letter named a plane formed by the four lines. Who can give me one? This time, plane. Recall, to name a plane, we need at least three points, non, three non-collinear points, or by using a small, or a letter rather, a point that is not on the line. Number four. 
Ito lang naman dito ang plane eh. Ito. Yan. Ito lang yung plane dito. Kasi the rest, hindi sila close-sided figure. So, they are not plane. Pakipangalan nga? Anyone? Well, let's make it a little bit faster. Anyone? Number four. Using three letters first. Anyone? I'll give the first one. Plain WXY. Plain WXY. What else? Plain WZY po. Plain WZY. What else? Plain XYZ. Plain XYZ. What else? Or pwedeng baliktaran niyo na XYZ or X ZYX. Same. Next. Plain YZW. Plain YZ YZW. Or WZY. Meron pa ba? By using one letter. By using one letter. Plain what? Plain A, sir. Plain, plain A. Okay? Plain A. Uh, sinagot na naman natin yung ano eh. Uh, by using four letters. Plain WXYZ, sir. Plain WXYZ. Okay, very good. That's it. Do you have any question or clarification? Wala na po, sir. Okay. If there is none, then let's proceed. Oh, ayan. Actually, ayan na yung mga sagot natin kanina. Mm, okay. Some of the answers. Okay. Let's have another exercise. So, determine whether each of the following is true or false. Number one, read and state your answer. Jillian, is Jillian around? Jillian, come on. Oh, sige, let's save Jillian for later. Let's have Merzel. Merzel, read number one. Read number one and then your answer. Go. Number one, read number one and then your answer. Merzel. May I do it, sir? Okay. Please do the honor. Go. A and D are collinear. My answer is true. Points A, N, and D are collinear. And your answer is? The answer true. is true. So points A, N, and D are collinear. Yes, they lie on the same line. You know, meaning they are collinear. So, this is true. Lagay ko lang T, ha? Pero supposedly, ang sagot, the word true. So, dapat marunong kayo sumunod sa instruction. Para madali lang. Number two. Read and then your answer. Anyone? Yes, Carlo? Um, number two is false. Points A, R, Z, and K are coplanar. We have point A here, R, and a Z, and where's K? Ah, K here. A, R, and Z, tapos K. And dito yung K eh, di ba? Ito, nasa labas siya ng dal tatlong point na to. So, meaning this is false. Number three, point C, R, Z, and T are non-coplanar. True. Is it true? Um, let's see. False. C, R, Z, and T are non-coplanar. Yes, nasa labas ang C, di ba? So, non-coplanar. This is true. Four. M, K, and T are coplanar. M, K, true. and T are coplanar. True. Okay. True. Five. M, R, A, and I are coplanar. 
M False. R False. A and I. So nasa labas yung I. Ito kasi yung plane na tinutukoy. Ayun. So I. Ibig sabihin ito yung plane na ito. So I should be non-coplanar. So this is false. R Z points to ha pero ano ko lang R Z and T are non-collinear. We have here R Z and T are non-collinear. So we have R Z and T are non-collinear. Non-collinear ba? False. False. They are collinear. The points lie on the same line. Seven. E, C, and M are collinear. True. We have E, C, and M are collinear. So true. Eight. Intersection of line segment EA and line segment AD is point A. True. 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 Intersection. Kung saan sila nagkakasalubong. Number nine. Line se segment EM is parallel. Yan, parallel. To line segment DT. EM is parallel to DT. Ayun. True. Yan, parallel sila. True. True. A, line segment AD and EI here are parallel also. Ito rin o, oh, etong point EM na to, tsaka point, uh, line segment AD and line segment EM, hindi sila nagmimet, pero hindi sila parallel. Kasi parallel lines are lines that never, that will never intersect. Pero, may isa pang line na hindi nag-intersect. Ang tawag dito is Q lines. Line EM, tsaka A, line segment AD are Q lines. Okay, that's it. Screenshot nyo lang para yan, may sagot. Apa, sir? Just tell me if you need to uh, take a screenshot of our slides for your reference. Okay, next. Punta na tayo dito sa congruence. Okay, punta na tayo sa congruence. So, can you see how the idea of congruence is used in the mass production of various products? So, when we say congruence, yung pagkakapare-pareho ang ibig sabihin ng congruence. So, the idea of congruence always helps to recognize congruent figures in the same orientation. When two figures are congruent, you may slide, flip, or rotate the figures until until they overlap exactly. Kaya ang manunotice nyo kung ipag, uh, ipag patong patong mo sila, nag overlap sila kasi congruent sila. So try to imagine kung nag-arrange ka ng mga utensils na hindi congruent, di ba mahirap? So, importante ang concept ng congruence sa mga pinoproduce, mass produce na mga products. And try to imagine as well, um, and what, uh, what do we call this one? Try to imagine uh, arranging your money na iba-iba yung sizes, bills, kung hindi sila congruent. So, baka sumasobra sa mga wallets, right? Hindi maganda. So, mahirap i-organize. So, that's one of the importance of the idea of congruence na tinatawag. So, properties of triangle congruence. So, the properties of equality as well as the properties of congruence that follow from them are often, often used in doing formal geometric proof. So, we have here, dito na natin ginagamit yung mga properties we discussed earlier. So, we have here the reflexive property of congruence. We have the symmetric property of congruence. And we have the transitive property of congruence. So we're going to discuss uh, these one by one.
So, for example, sa reflexive property of congruence, di ba kapag sinabi natin reflexive, uh, anything is equal to itself. So, how do we state that one? So, if we are talking about an angle, specific angle, let's say angle A, so angle A is congruent to angle A. So, we read this one as congruent. Angle A is congruent to angle A. Then, line segment AB is congruent to line segment AB as well. Then, how about the symmetric property? Ano nga yung symmetric property kanina natin na tinatawag? Kapag symmetric property, dito kanina, sa ano natin? Ayan. Kapag binaliktad natin, pareho pa rin yung um, kalalabasan. If angle A is congruent to angle B, then we can say that angle B is congruent to angle A. So that is how we state actually symmetric property of congruence. If line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD, then we can say as well, excuse me, that line segment CD is congruent to line segment AB. And for transitive property of congruence, if it involves three angles, in this case we have angles A, B, and C, if we say that angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, then we can conclude or say that angle A is congruent to angle C as well. If we're talking about line segment, line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD and line segment CD is congruent to line segment EF, then we can say that line segment AB is congruent to line segment EF. Are you following? Do you follow, class? Yes, sir. Okay. Magtanong lang pag hindi nasundan na. Let's proceed. Punta tayo dito. So, parts of a triangle. In geometry, a triangle is a closed two-dimensional shape with three straight sides uh, three straight sides it is also a polygon a clo closed sided figure is what we call a polygon a triangle has three sides three vertices and three angles okay so what are the sides here so we have side ab ko muna mag ano ha Magnename side AB ito or side BA we have side BC and then pwede natin lagyan ng line segment AB line segment BC and line segment AC or we can call it Side AB or BA, side AC, and side BC. And what are the three angles? The three angles are ito. We use this symbol to denote angle. Angle A, then we have this one. Angle B, and we have angle C here so these are the three angles of triangle ABC vertices the vertices is what we call the common end point of the two sides Ito, meaning the common end point of side AB and AC is A so vertex A ang tawag doon a and then B side AB and BC is B and then side AC and B or CB or BC is C understood understood class yes sir yes full sir okay so that's it picture nyo lang okay then 
Moving on. Punta na tayo sa correspondence. So mathematically speaking, the symbol for corresponds to is this one. We use this um, to denote correspondence. So that means line segment AB corresponds to line segment DE. And angle A corresponds to angle B. To angle A corresponds to angle, it should be D, I'm sorry. This should be D, not B. So dapat, tignan nyo muna yung figure. Let's look at the figure first. Before, um, before determining what are the corresponding angles and what are the corresponding sides. So dapat, pareho ang pagkakastate natin ng mga parts. So dapat, idodraw natin ulit yung, para hindi kayo malito, we are going to draw the triangle by following the other. Exactly the same as the other. Pwede siguro dito, para maliit lang. Pero susundin natin yung drawing na to sa isa. Ayan. Corresponding parts sa take note na yung, esa, yung yellow na triangle dito, baliktad, iba yung pagkakadrawing niya, upside down siya. So, ano yung corresponding, ano yung angle corresponding to angle A? Diba, angle D? Ito o. Oh. So, dapat ito D. Pero kung magaling kang tumingin, no need to draw the figure again. Tignan mo lang yung sa drawing. And then, this is F. Yung angle na to. And of course, we have angle A. Okay. Sige. Then, let's determine the corresponding sides and corresponding angles. Sabihin nyo kung ano yung corresponding side, ah. Uh, line segment DE corresponds to what side? Line segment DE corresponds to what side? DE, sir. DE. Line segment DE or side DE correspond to what side here? AB. Ano? AB. Okay. DE corresponds to line segment AB. Okay. Next. Side DF corresponds to what side here? AC, sir. AC. Side EF corresponds to what side here? BC, people. BC. Okay, that's it. Tatlong sides lang naman yan. Now, let's proceed to angles. Corresponding angles. Angle D corresponds to what angle? Angle E. Angle D corresponds to angle A. Po. A. A. Ayun o. Oh, pareho, pareho na sila ng figure eh. Ayun o. Oh. Kaya natin renewing para to avoid confusion. Angle E corresponds to what angle? B. Po. Angle B. Angle B. Pwede natin yung lagyan ng symbol para hindi tayo malito. Ah, ulitin natin sa sides kanina ha. Side DE, ayan, correspond to side AB. Side DB, dalawa na, corresponds to side AC. Meaning sila yung magkaka-corresponding sides, corresponding parts. Side EF, tatlo, Okay. Corresponds to side BC. Do you follow? Then, let's continue sa angles. So, angle E corresponds to angle A. Angle E corresponds to angle B. To angle B. 
angle F, angle F corresponds to angle A. Angle C. Angle, angle C. Angle C. Okay. Understood? Yes, Pa. So, if the three sides and the three angles are congruent, then we can say that triangle DEF is congruent to angle ABC. Kapag ang tatlong side ng isang triangle corresponds to the three sides of another triangle and the three angles of one triangle corresponds to another three sides of one triangle, then we can say that the, that, that the two triangles are congruent. So we can say now the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Understood? Yes, sir. What if, what if may isang side na hindi corresponding? Can we say that the two angles are congruent? No, sir. No, we can't. Unless the three corresponding sides and three corresponding angles are congruent. Then we can say that the two triangles are congruent. Do you follow? Yes, sir. Okay, that's it. Let's see what's next. Sige nga, dito. Ah, ito yung kanina, no? Hmm. Ito yung kanina na yan. Drinowing lang natin ng pareho. Yes. Ito yung, ito yung answer actually. Pwede yung screenshot. Are you done? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. That's it. Oh, ito meron tayo dito. Observe this one. Triangle ABC daw is congruent to triangle EDF. A, B, C is congruent to a triangle E, D, F. Although we are talking the same triangle here, but the way it was named is not by corresponding parts. It's not according to its corresponding part. Dapat, kung nag-start ka dito sa A, magsa-start ka rin doon sa D. Followed by B, followed by E, followed by C, followed by F. By corresponding parts. Understood? Yes, Pa. Kapag hindi ganun yung pagkapangalan mo, although uh, tama naman yung mga corresponding angles and corresponding sides, pero mali yung pagkakastate mo ng pagkakasunod ng parts, that is wrong. So be careful, ha, when naming two congruent triangles. That should be according to corresponding parts. Tinatawag natin yun na CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Ito yung, ito yung sinistate natin kapag nagpo-prove na tayo. Okay, that's it. O, sige nga. I'll give you time for these two triangles. State or determine the three corresponding sides and three corresponding angles. I'll give you five, uh, three minutes or two minutes. Madali na naman yan. Go. Try to draw similar triangles on your paper and then mark the corresponding sides and corresponding angles. Just like what I did earlier. Are you done? Are you done, class? Okay, tapos na. Let's see. Tapos uh, na. Ito. Okay, tignan nyo kung tama kayo. Pwede namang iba yung pagkakamark nyo, basta pareho lang sila. So, tama ba? Uh, let's start from the corresponding angles. Angle C corresponds to angle D. Tama kayo? Angle A corresponds... Okay. Angle A corresponds to angle O. Angle T corresponds to angle G. Um, line, side. And then side... CA corresponds to side DO, side AT corresponds to side OG, and side CT corresponds to side DG. If all the corresponding angles and corresponding sides corresponds to each other, 
then we can say that triangle BOG is congruent to triangle CAT. Who got it correctly? Lahat kayo? Yes, okay, that's good. Okay, let's have this one. Sige nga, another one. Yung angle, yung O na to, dito to sa pink ha. Ah, yung O na to. Ang A na to, dito to sa, ano, sa blue. State nyo tapos yung congruent. Kindly turn your mic off first, Marzel. Para hindi mag-feedback. Ay, I'm sorry. This O belongs to blue. Yung A dito belongs to pink. Uh, to pink, I mean. Uh, we have here dog, triangle dog, and triangle cat. I'm done na po, sir. Okay, sige. Let's wait a uh, few seconds. Then, let's discuss your answers. Review mo lang una. Okay? Let's see. Ayan. Tama ba? Check your answer. Your answers. Tama? Apa, sir. Okay. So, if all the corresponding angles are congruent and all the corresponding sides are congruent as well, then we can say that triangle CAT is congruent to triangle DOG or triangle CAT is congruent to triangle dog. Pwede ba natin pangalanan na triangle triangle A T C is congruent to triangle O G D Is it still correct? Yes, sir. Yes. As long as by part. Kung ito ka um, nag-una, ito rin dapat ang, ang una doon sa kabila. Understood? By corresponding part. Yes, sir. Okay, that's it. Uh, another one. Complete the congruent statement. The markings are done for you. Just complete the statement. Just tell me if you're done. Are you done? Done na po, sir. Okay. Um, since you are the first one, try to answer the first figure here. What's your answer here? Hmm. What's your answer? Triangle man. Very cool, sir. Triangle man is congruent to what triangle? Ay, eto, eto. Dito, dito. This triangle man is congruent to what triangle? To triangle dancer. Okay, triangle den or den. <laughs> Correct. Who got it correctly? Lahat ba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. How about the next one here? Who can tell me the triangle, which is congruent to triangle red? Gray, sir. Gray. Triangle? Triangle gray? Triangle... What triangle? Our triangle red is G. congruent to triangle G. 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 Uh, letters. Pwede mabasa. G E R Come again? E Triangle G. Letters. Use G. letters. Triangle. G. G. Why G? Bakit nag-start ka dito sa G? Doon siya nag-start. -E. We have. G. 
R E. Why G R E? Ang dalawang triangle. RGB po, sir. Ano na? RGB. Triangle R E D is congruent to R. Is it? Ano ang angle na ito ay? This is congruent to what angle? Triangle, angle? Hindi po. D. Di ba? Hindi po. Ito yung congruent niya o. Oh. Dapat ni-name niyo muna yung sides at saka angles. Corresponding sides and angles. Before you can name the two congruent triangles. This angle is congruent to this angle, di ba? Ayan o. And of course, this angle here is congruent to this angle. So therefore, triangle RED is congruent to triangle what? D G R. Okay, that's it. Are you following? Yes, po, sir. Okay, that's it. Then, the next one. Triangle LAN is congruent to what triangle? Determine muna natin yung congruent sides. Side EI is congruent to what side? Congruent to side AN. Angle E is congruent to angle A. Angle I is congruent to angle N. Therefore, all sides are congruent, all angles are congruent. Then, we can say the triangle L A N is congruent to triangle L L E I L E I Yes L E I And the last one uh, Let's determine the corresponding sides first So side KR is congruent to side CY then, angle R is congruent to angle C. Angle K is congruent to angle Y. And angle I is congruent to angle I din siya. Ito yung ginagamit natin na reflexive property. Angle I is congruent to angle I. Kung may pareho silang kama na angles. Or na angle rather. Do you follow? Same din dito. Angle L is congruent to angle L by symmetric property. Kasi pareho yung angle na tinutukoy. So therefore, triangle RKI is congruent to triangle what? Y-C-I, sir. R-K-I, meaning, ito yung angle na nauna. C-Y-I po. C-Y-I. Yes, C-Y-I. Tignan nyo yung corresponding parts before naming the triangle. Okay na? Naintindihan na? Pwede yung screenshot. Then, oh, last na siguro to. Last dosi na rin naman. Triangle MAN is congruent to triangle DEN. Name the corresponding part of each of the following. So, angle M corresponds to what angle? Bilisan natin. Angle D. D. Okay, angle D. Ba, bilis na. D. D. Angle E corresponds to what angle? Angle A. Angle A. Okay. E po. A po. Number three, angle E and D 
corresponds to what angle? Eh, tingnan nyo ha. E A-N-N. A-N-N. E-N-D. A-N-N. Ang tinutukoy na to na angle eto. Ang sa gitna. Yan yung angle niya. E-N-D. Ayan yung angle niya. Angle N ang tinutukoy. So, angle E and this corresponds to angle A-N-N. A-N-N. A-N-M. Okay. Side A-N or line segment A-N here corresponds to what side? E-N. E-N. Okay. Be careful with the parts. Angle MAN corresponds to what angle? D. Angle DEN. Angle? DEN po. Yes. Angle D. E. N. Side ND or line segment ND corresponds to what side? NM. NM. Okay, NM. Then, number seven, angle D corresponds to what angle? Angle M. Angle M. Number eight, side MN corresponds to what side? DN. Not angle, side. Line segment. Line segment or side NE corresponds to? Side NA. Side NA. And number 10, side DN corresponds to? Side MN. Side MN. MN. Oh, galing. Okay, that's it. So, yan yung sagot natin. O, yan yung sagot. Pwede nyo i-take yung screenshot. Tsaka, okay, that ends our discussion. So, do you have any questions or clarifications? No, sir. Wala na? Wala na. No, sir. Okay, so I'm expecting na maasira nyo na yung inyong worksheets. While it's still fresh on your mind, so try to answer the activities outright. Okay? Understood? Yes, sir. Or if you have any questions or clarifications after this, you can you can you can give me a message actually. So that's all for today. And thank you for attending again our online class. Have a good day, stay safe and good vibes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay.